Yo guys, what's up? Welcome to today's video. Today I'll be teaching the airsoft disassembly of the Navy P226 pistol. Now this video will be separated into a few parts. The first one will be the fuel disassembly, separating the slide from the body. The second part will be disassembling the slide. The third part will be disassembling the body. The fourth part will be disassembling the sear assembly. And the fifth part will be disassembling the hammer. And last but not least, the sixth part, we will re reassemble the whole thing in one go. Alright, so bear with me now. And before we start, remember to take out your magazine. Make sure there are no bullets inside, although this is an airsoft gun, it does not fire without a magazine, but still, just to be sure. And the tools that you will need, these are the mandatory ones, will be a flathead screwdriver for the sides and insides, a Phillips head screwdriver for the screws inside, a 1.5 hexagonals drive to remove the sights on the slide. This is an optional. If you don't want to remove the slides, you don't have to have this tool. And also, some uh, pistols have hexagonal screws for their side plates, so you might want to take note if your pistol is one of them. And then also, the non-optional tools are a hammer to knock out the pegs, depending on the tightness of your pistol. There are pegs inside, keeping the hammer assembly inside together. And also a hole punch. Uh, I don't personally have a hole punch, so I am using a needle punch. You can also use a very thin screwdriver or hexagonal drive. However, do take note that they have different purposes, and if your screwdriver breaks, it is not on me. And you will also want to prepare pliers to help you pull the springs or some tweezers to help you adjust the smaller um, parts of the pistol. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin with part one of removing the slide. Make sure your hammer is to the forward front. Let's lock the slide back. Take the takedown lever, push it to the bottom, and then your slide should come off very easily. So that's it for the fuel disassembly, very, very simple. Uh, if you want to go prepare your tools, take a break, whatever, go take a break and we'll come back for part two, which is the disassembly of the slide. Okay, welcome back to part two. We will be now disassembling the slide. And for the slide, it is very simple. Uh, my, this isn't my gun, but this one does have to have a replacement because the buffer spring here, this part, it is supposed to have a protruding piece right here. You can see a square that it uh, broke off. There's supposed to be a protruding piece locking into a hole here, which is a great design of the P226. It makes it very easy to place the buffer tube just so that it is uh, in the right placement for you to lock the slide back, because one of the problems is if you don't align it well with the other pistols, the slide won't go back in properly. Now, for the barrel, very simple. Push it forward all the way front to the front, pull it up and out. Now, as most airsoft pistols, the P226 has an outer and inner barrel. The inner barrel is for the actual airsoft bullet itself. The outer barrel is just for cosmetic purposes, to look more like the barrel of a real gun. Okay, now that all that's left is inside is the gas valve and also the sights. Okay, so to remove that, you have three screws, the hexagonal 1.5 screws that I talked about, and a Phillips screw right here. So take your tools, and let's begin the disassembly. First of all, we will do the sights. So these are the sights. They came off of the slide, so we can put that to the side. And then next up is the Phillips screw that is keeping it in place. Unscrew that, make sure that you keep that. And we can take this upwards. And make sure you take note of this part. There is a spring and a peg inside, so you want to make sure you don't lose that, okay? So pull that up, or you can just dump it out. And this is the peg that I was talking about. And this peg is secured by this spring inside there. Okay, that spring right there, that's where the peg is resting inside of the slide. So that's the entire disassembly of the slide. Move this to the side or skip to the back if we want to reassemble this immediately. So we'll move this to the side and teach you how to reassemble it later on. Okay, so that's all for the slide. Now we'll move on to part three, which is the disassembly of the lower body. Before that, you can take a break, get a drink of water, and we will be back very shortly. Okay, welcome back to part three of the disassembly. Let us begin immediately. Now let's first start by taking off the slide release lever. This one, uh, for my variation, it's very simple. You disassembly, uh, you took down the slide by pushing it to the bottom. To take down the slide release lever, push it back to the locked position, sort of shimmy it around, and push from the other side. And you will notice that it comes loose. And just pull, turn and pull. And you need to find the right angle for the circle to go through, and it's that simple, it comes off. So at the release angle, it comes flat so that the slide can go out. When it is locked, it comes back up so that this quarter part of the uh, pin is keeping the slide in place. And also, this tiny peg here is what you need to align to this hole to, in order to push it in and pull it out smoothly. So make sure you align that and just not keep pulling or pushing blindly and probably break apart or break your own finger. Okay? Now, some people have been asking me what uh, the part of the sear assembly is. And this part right here, this pin right here, is the pin that is used to keep the slide a release in place. So you see this hole right here? This thing is spring-powered and it locks into this hole when you have it in the locked position. And when you push it down, it's going to uh, lock it slightly so that it won't disassemble itself by accident. 
we will be taking off the side plates of this pistol. So it's very simple. All you need to do is unscrew the screws on the side plates and it will come right off. Also, something to take note is that inside here is a peg connecting these two side plates. So when you pull, you want to pull straight out and not pull it at an angle or you might snap the peg inside. Now, personally, I like to first take off the left side plate so that I can take the side parts off because the hammer release lever, all it is secured with is a hole inside of here and a peg. So I usually take this off and then take off the other side plate or it might fall off. And when you do gun disassemblies, it's very, very important and very, very recommended to have a cloth or some fabric type material on your workspace. Firstly, to keep the bottom table or whatever platform you're doing this on clean. And secondly, to keep all of the uh, small parts from rolling off of your platform. Okay, so the second plate comes off like so. Inside here will be a spring that keeps the trigger bar upwards so that it can, uh, so that it can pull on the hammer release like that. Now. You want to take this off very carefully because it is very it is under a lot of tension. So try to take it off without it flying away, and this is what it looks like. This thing hooks onto the trigger bar, and the other part goes along this groove. Put that to the side. Now, as I said, it is used to keep it upright. So now that it is down, you can see that if I pull the hammer back, it cannot fire. And the safety pin lever, this thing right here, it is uh, when you pull down, it pushes on this bar, this thing right here, and when you push up manually, it releases the hammer like that. So that's how the gun works eternally, internally. And this thing here is the magazine release cover. All it does is cosmetics. It makes the this part look more flush and you don't see the button thing here inside. So that this is the entire frame of the gun. Uh, that's it for the lower body disassembly. Next up, we'll go into part four, the hammer assembly. Okay. Okay, welcome back to part four of this tutorial video. Now we will be taking off the hammer assembly of the gun. So the first thing you want to do is take off this uh, spring. This spring is what keeps the hammer tensioned. This is what makes it pop when you release the trigger or when you release the hammer release. Okay, so it is kept in place by this pin right here. Your design might be different. I have seen ones that you need to pull, uh, that you need to push up and then pull outwards. But for mine, it is push this pin out and then pull this spring outwards. Okay, so take your hole punch or take a thin tool or whatever and punch it out. And you want to make sure most guns have their pins, uh, they usually have teeth. For mine, it's on this side. So the teeth is used to kept, keep the pegs in place and not let it fall out for friction purposes. When you disassemble it, you want to make sure you push from the place where it has no teeth so that it pops out from the place that has teeth. If you push it in the opposite direction, the teeth part is go through, the teeth part will go through the no teeth part and it will harm the frame itself. So both ways are possible, but if you go through it the wrong way, it's going to hurt your gun frame and it will not be as tight. Okay, so take your hole punch and punch it out. And just like so, it comes out and put it to the side. It's a very small part, so you want to be careful. And this spring is very under, and this spring is under a lot of tension. So you want to make sure you hold it tight, pull it outwards, and then release it. Okay. And this thing just falls out very easily. Now the way uh, you put it back is kind of fiddly, but uh, during the reassembly, I will teach you guys how to do so. Now flip it back to the other side, and we will push out this pin right here with your hole punch. Push it out. It extrudes this part, and pull it out like that. And the next thing keeping it in place is this pin right here. So for this pin, you want to push from this side out this side. Most guns are the same, pushing from the right side out through the left side. And this is when you're looking down the barrel, okay? So take your hole punch once again, placement, and then. And for this, you might want to take some pliers to pull it upwards. Okay, like that. And then put it to the side. Okay, after that, you should be able to take your hammer assembly up and out, like that. So this is our hammer assembly, and then we can put that to the side. Now I'll teach you guys how to disassemble this bad boy right here. Okay, after taking the hammer assembly off, first of all, you want to take this piece off. The way you want to do it, keep a finger on the top of it, because there's a spring inside, and this finger will keep it from flying off to somewhere that you don't know. And the next, part, and the next step would be to pull on this tab here to pull it upwards towards yourself and outwards. Like this. And you see the spring inside? Make sure you keep that like so. Now put this spring to the side, and put this piece to the side, and we'll continue the disassembly. So, right now we can take a look at the entire workings of the hammer. So you can see this thing is what locks the hammer in place, and when you pull it forward, this piece, when you pull it forward, the hammer is disconnected. When you release it, when you pull it back, the hammer locks back, like so. Okay, so usually you won't have to disassemble the hammer under any circumstances unless you want to upgrade or repair these parts. So you unscrew these two screws, and this cover plate will come off. Okay, after unscrewing the screws, you want to pull this up and out very carefully. And this spring, you want to take good care of it because it might pop out. 
So you want to take a plier or your hands, if you're nimble enough, and pull it upwards. This is what is keeping the power on the hammer lock. Now, after you take that spring up, you will notice the hammer lock now has no tension and will not automatically lock your hammer back when it is cocked. Okay, now after you take off the hammer lock spring, you can take the hammer lock up and out. This is what the hammer lock looks like. Back to the hammer assembly, you can take the hammer up and out, put it to the side. Okay, so this is the firing pin for the airsoft pistols. You can see this spring here, this tiny spring here. What it does is it keeps the airsoft uh, firing pin on the downward position and prevents it from coming upwards like this. Okay, now when, what you want to do, if you want to take it off, all you want to do is make sure this spring, remove it first would be a better idea. Take it out. Take it out of there. Make sure it doesn't fly away. Pull this up. Like that. Put it to the side. And then you can take that spring inside out. Like so. So that is the entire uh, hammer assembly disassembled. And you can put that to the side. This is cover plate A and cover plate B. Okay, so that's it for the hammer assembly. Now we'll go back to the main frame and later we'll disassemble the last piece, which is the sear assembly. So that was probably a lot. Uh, if you want to take a break, take your time, and we'll see you in some time. Okay, welcome back to our P226 Navy variant disassembly tutorial. Now we will be disassembling the last part, which is the sear assembly. So for the sear assembly, first off, you want to take off the magazine lock spring. The magazine lock, as the name says, is the thing that locks the magazine in place. So like that. You push it, it releases, but when you don't put tension on it, it pops back into the locked position. So this thing, this long piece right here, is what keeps tension on the magazine lock. Now, you want to go through this hole right here, with a sharp object, and pull this tab forward, like so. Hold on, let me focus on that, and show you once again. So, usually it will be flush with the gun, and when you push it forward, it's going to become like this. Okay, after it's like that, you can take it out, like so. And this spring right here is what keeps the tension on. And after that, you can push the magazine lock from this side and pull it out from this side. Again, make sure the angles are right so that you can take it out flawlessly. And to show you guys what I meant about the tension part, this thing goes into this groove right here, like so. And the spring here tensions the magazine lock so that when you push, it pushes against this springy section of the metal piece. And you can take that off. And make sure you do take that off, because if you don't, it might fall somewhere that you can't keep track of. Okay, now moving on to the next part, we will take the actual sear block off of the gun frame. What you want to do is unscrew any screw that you will have. Again, each manufacturer has different designs, but um, the one that I have dem on demonstration today, the screw is on here and here. So Phillips head here, flat head here. Okay, unscrew both of them. Okay, like that. So you unscrew that screw, put it to the side, and after that, you should be able to pull the sear block out up and out, and before you do that, you want to keep track of this place right here. In the sear block, that is, in the sear block, there is a spring here that is not locked in place, so you want to make sure you keep that safe. Right here, you see that? Keep your finger on there, make sure it doesn't fly away. Pull the entire thing out, put your frame to the side. So here we have our sear block. This is the trigger bar, the one that pulls on the hammer release. This is the slide lock, the one that goes up when your magazine is empty and locks the slide back. And this, of course, is your trigger. Now. It is locked in place by this pin right here. All you need to do is push this part and it will come out. And also, you want to keep track of this placement. This is where many people get it wrong. This thing right here. This piece is locked onto the trigger bar. They move simultaneously in the same direction. And I'll show you guys how many people put it back the wrong way. So push that out. Nothing will pop here, so don't worry about that. Pull this peg out. And here is the slide lock. Here is the trigger bar, here is the trigger with the trigger spring, which will not pop out so you can just put it to the side, and also this piece right here. So what I said about that in the back uh, earlier on is it goes in this placement, okay? It locks on like that, okay? It becomes one and the same. It does not go on like this. No, no, no. That is wrong, okay? So that is a lot of, that is one of the main mistakes that uh, people will do. So that's the entire disassembly of the sear block, except for the sear release lever spring thingy, which I will not demonstrate because you will not have any need to do so unless you need repairs, and it is very straightforward. Just push this pin out, and this plastic piece will come out, the spring will come out, and the slide lock peg will come out. So that's it for the sear block. Congratulations, you have completed the entire disassembly of your P226. All that is left is the metal frame, and you can create your own cursed image by sharing this with your friends. 
Okay, now take a break. Take a note of all of your parts for the P226 lower body, and after that we'll come back for a reassembly. Okay, welcome back to the tutorial. Now we will move on to part 6, which is the reassembly of the entire gun. And this part will be sorted into five smaller parts. 6.1 will be the reassembly of the sear block. 6.2 will be the reassembly of the hammer assembly. 6.3 will be reassembly of the lower body. 6.4 will be reassembly of the slide. And 6.5 will be the field reassembly. Now let's begin with the sear disassembly. Okay, so reassembly of the sear block. You want to take your trigger, your slide lock, your trigger bar, and also this piece thingy here. And the way you want to reassemble it is this small th piece goes first. Make sure you put this first. And then the slide, uh, the trigger bar goes on like this and it connects together. So when you turn your trigger bar, the small thing turns. When you turn the small thing, the trigger bar turns, okay? And to put it into the slide block, the sear block, take your finger, hold it in place, slide it into the block here. And after you place it into the block, it will be held on by its own two sides and after that you can release your finger and place it in after placing it in use your other hand to put pressure on it so that the hole is aligned take your locking pin place it through the slide lock in this orientation and then lock the whole thing in place like that the first time you put it in there will be a small gap here that allows it to flop around continue to fiddle around with your trigger and push the pin all the way through so that it is flush with the side of the sear block if the trigger works and the trigger bar moves with it, that means it is normal, okay? And we will move on to the hammer reassembly. All right, friends, welcome back to the tutorial. Now, moving on to 6.2, the reassembly of the hammer assembly. You can put your trigger bar, you can put your trigger block, you can put your sear block to the side, and we will put it back into the frame for part 6.3, the reassembly of the lower body. And you can take the lower part of your hammer assembly, like that, and as you may remember, we must first put back the spring that keeps tension on our firing pin. So put it in like this, make sure the short side is on top, and put it in like so. And then, after that, you want to put your firing pin inside. Okay, you want to take your firing pin and place it in, in this orientation, with the two protruding parts on the bottom. There is supposed to be another protruding piece on top here, but it snapped off for my demonstration pistol. So there should be two protruding parts, and this one will be facing downwards when you put it in. And make sure you use the head to first place tension on the spring here, and push it forward like that. Forward and upward, okay? Okay, now after you manage to get it in, make sure it goes forward and backward normally. Make sure the springs prevents it from going upward normally, like that, that is good. Now flip to the other side. See these two small pins here? We need to place the tension spring, tension spring back on. Make sure the two parts are facing downwards so that when you put it in, it's flush with the uh, back of the hammer assembly. So place that in there. Okay, so again, you want to take your tweezers because this is a very fiddly part and pull it onto this peg here. It will not go in initially, so you might want to encourage it a bit because the sides that are around it is quite tight. So initially, it will not fall into the groove itself. You're going to have to encourage it a tiny bit. And then once it's in there flush, you will be good. And to make sure if it's good, uh, push on your firing pin, and it should retract automatically. Okay, so after this part, we can flip it back around and place in your hammer. Make sure its placement is correct. Push it a tiny bit forward, and the hammer should be able to fall in like that. Okay, after placing the hammer in, you can make sure that it can push on the firing pin. And if it can, that is normal. And then after that, you want to take your hammer lock and make sure the orientation is right. The extruding parts will be downwards, and this circular groove for the spring will be upwards, and place it in like so. Okay, moving on to the spring for the hammer lock. You want to take your spring. It's going to be two ends. This end has a protruding part. This end is just an uh, arched piece. So the arched piece go on to the corner of the hammer lock, and the extruding part will extrude into the frame of the assembly in order to put tension on the hammer lock. So put it, put it in like this and use your pliers to somehow get this piece into the frame of the hammer assembly. Okay, after pushing it in, make sure you keep your hands on it, because it does tend to be very, very naughty, and it does want to fly away very much. So, so after you put this back, you want to immediately place the cover plate back on, like that. Make sure you orient it correctly. And if the spring does pop up, just take it off and rinse and repeat. Okay, like that. So after you have it on there, you want to quickly screw on your two screws. 
which are these two. After you screw that on, you want to make sure your hammer lock works, so when it cocks back, you should not be able to push it forward. Okay, so that's it for the hammer assembly reassembly. Now we'll move on to our lower body disassembly very soon. Okay, welcome back. Now we'll move on to our lower body reassembly. And this part, we will first put back our sear block. Okay, so our sear block looks like this. And if you guys remember, there was a spring here, which we will now put in. So this is how it goes. First, you want to slide it in. Make sure you align this peg, this round peg extruding part with this groove right here, which is designed for it. Align it there and make sure you put your trigger through first or it, it will not go in. And after that, don't put it in all the way yet. Place your spring inside like so. Use gravity to make it sit in that groove like that. And then you can push it down into your body. Okay, like that. Make sure everything is aligned. And you can push it in. After you push it in, make sure the spring is working. When you pull it up, it's going to flick back down. That is good. And after that, you can screw the sear block back on with the two screws. Okay, after that, your sear block will be finished, and you can make sure that your um, slide lock is working by putting an empty magazine up, and it should push it down, and that is good. Or you can also just use your hand to push it up and make sure it, push, uh, it automatically resets back to the downward position. Okay, so the next part we will be putting back our ham... Okay, so the next part we will be putting back our hammer assembly. And to do so, you want to make sure that when you do it, you do it in this placement and not like this, so that you make sure with gravity that your trigger bar is always sticking to the side of the frame so that it doesn't interfere with our insertion of the hammer assembly. And also before putting it in, you might remember this piece. So we need to put this in now. So first, place your um, spring into the groove there. Okay, so you're going to use this tiny protruding tab right here, this thing to push the spring downwards. And while it's downwards, you're gonna take this tab and place it into this hole right here. So this is what it's gonna look like. While you're doing this, keep a finger in front of it so that in case uh, you blow it, the spring does not fly away. So put, pull the spring downwards, put the piece inwards, and then it will have a upward momentum. So when you pull it down, it should want to go up. If it does, you have correctly placed it in and you wanna make sure to keep your finger on top so that it doesn't fly off when you reassemble uh, your hammer assembly. So to do that, just slide it in very naturally, and you might want to push this piece out of the way, your slide lock out of the way, and it should go in very naturally, like that. So next you want to take your small pin or big pin, which one goes first, it doesn't matter, but make sure you remember the direction for your teeth sides. For mine, it's facing this side, so we'll go in from here. So place it in, take a hammer or a mallet or a hard tool, and just push it in. And in the end, it's going to be tighter, so you can use your pliers to clip it back in. But make sure you don't hurt the frame by accidentally uh, slipping and scratching the frame, okay? So use your hammer or your pliers to get it back in. And then take your uh, other pin and place it in. For the big one, make sure it is flush with the groove that is it rests in here. Make sure it's flush like so. Push it to the end, or you will have trouble reassembling uh, the, the pistol, okay? And after that... You can place in your uh, magazine release. You can do this before or after the hammer assembly. That's okay, it doesn't matter. So you wanna take your magazine release spring, look at it like this orientation. This is the back side, this is the front side. Look at it like this. Take your spring, place it in like this, in this orientation. The straight side will be facing the right and the spring part will be facing to the left. And then put that to the side. Now you can put your magazine uh, release button into the hole. For the other side, make sure you align it so that it can go in smoothly. Okay, and then finally you will place it in like this. Make sure you have your magazine uh, release button aligned correctly. And then take this piece and push it in. Okay, like that. Push it in. And then this one, uh, it does. it is slightly hard to push in, so align it correctly and push it in. And you do need to make sure the alignment is correct, because if you don't align it correctly, it will not go in the right way. Okay, so after you push it into the magazine lock button, you want to push the top of this piece into the sear block. Like that. And then it will be flush with the sear block. Okay. okay. So after that, we can move on to our next part. Uh, you can do your slide lock now or later. It's fine. It doesn't matter because this is a separate part entirely. But I will teach you how to put it back first. So, you want to push it in directly. This pin will stay in the way uh, because it's there to keep your lock in place. So you want to push harder. Don't worry, you won't break anything. But for this part, line up this peg with the hole like this, and also the other side with the outer hole, that part. Make sure they're all aligned, and then you should be able to just push it right through, like that. And then it will turn normally, like so, 
So your slide lock is done. Next, we will place the tension back on the hammer with your hammer spring. Okay, so you want these, uh, the lever, the spring, and also the pin that keeps the lever in place. So this spring, you will notice that one side is smaller than the other. The smaller side faces upwards and goes into here. And then the way you place it in is like this orientation, just slide it into the hole on the bottom. And you should be able to lock on to something quite easily. After that, place tension on the spring and push your lever inwards. Okay, like that. And then after you pull your hammer, there should be tension. If there's not, it didn't hook on correctly. And you can take a um, pin or something to fish inside to adjust it so that it hooks on to the right thing. Once you get it into the right spot, you will feel tension when you try to cock the hammer. When you cock it to the rear and release the hammer lock, it will fly forward. And also, if you push the trigger bar manually upwards and pull the trigger, it will also release the hammer. So that's how it works. You pull the trigger, it pulls the trigger bar, the trigger bar releases the hammer lock, the hammer releases, and it hits the firing pin, the firing pin hits the magazine, and boom, a round goes out. That's how a pistol works. Same for airsoft and real pistols, except for real pistols hits the primer on the back of the bullet and the gunpowder explodes, pushing the bullet outwards. Okay, now after that, that is probably the hardest part of the reassembly, in my personal opinion, uh, trying to look for that sweet spot of the hammer spring of the hammer bar to hook onto the hammer. So after that, you want to put your um, locking peg back in to prevent it from sliding out, although it probably won't under the spring tension. But for this one, I recommend using the pliers to clip it because uh, it does have this uh, protector ring on the outside, this extruding ring here, so it will be very hard to knock it with the hammer, and that's why I recommend using pliers. Okay, so we are nearing the end of the reassembly. Congratulations, everyone. The next step would be to put back the outer pieces and then the grip covers. So for the right side, if we're facing the barrel, for the right side, you have this spring that keeps your trigger bar upwards. So you take this hook, hook it on the trigger bar, take this ring, put it around this hook here, and then place it around and into this groove. You might want to take a sharp object to help push it into the groove, encourage it a bit. And after you push it in, if it's pushed in the right way, it should stay in place. However, if you want to stay on the safe side, you can still hold it with your thumb or a finger. And then take your magazine release button cover, take the end part, face it upwards, and put it into the hole, like that. And then you can take your cover plate, place it on top, and screw this one on first, so the spring inside does not get touched by your clumsy fingers and fly out. Okay, take your flathead or your hexagonal driver, if you have a hexagonal screw for the side plates, screw it on. After that, flip your gun around, take your hammer release lever, place it in like so, place it in like so, and after it is in, you can try releasing the hammer by pulling down on it. It should work as usual, and if it does, push back the cover plate. For the left side cover plate, you want to first push in the top parts like this, and then push down the bottom part. And then again, screw in the screws, and we will finish our part 6.3. Reassembly of the lower body. Whew! Congratulations, everyone. You have finished the reassembly of the most difficult part of this pistol. Now you can take a break, congratulate yourself, pop some champagne, and later on we'll reassemble the slide and combine the entire thing. Okay, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your champagne. Now we will be reassembling our slide, which consists of the slide frame, our buffer uh, spring, our barrel, our gas valve, our upper sights, this uh, thing which I'm not sure the purpose of, and also the screw for the gas valve. Now first of all, we will replace the gas valve inwards. So remember, this spring right here, place this piece in and place it in first and then you will notice that the pin that we talked about is preventing you from pushing it in. So take something sharp, push it in, and then your gas valve will go in very smoothly. Okay, after that take your small Phillips head screw, screw it in to secure the thing in place first. Like that, okay, and that's in, and after that you want to screw on your rear sights. Make sure it's aligned well, place it in the sights groove, and then screw it back on with your hexagonal drive or depending on your sight screws. Okay, anyway, screw your back sights on. And after that, take your barrel, slant it downwards, push it in, push it back to meet the gas valve. And then take your buffer spring, push it in, place it all the way forward, make sure it comes out the front, and then you will be able to place it onto your barrel here. Okay, so that's finished for part 6.4, the reassembly of the slide, and then later we will reassemble the entire thing.
Welcome to the grand finale of this tutorial. We will now put the slide back on the lower body and then we will see if this airsoft pistol is working correctly. Okay, so take your takedown lever, put it to the bottom, align your slide and the lower body, the rails, and then push it to the back and push the lever forward. And then it is working as it should. The double action is great. And also the trigger release is also, the hammer release is also working. That is great. Now let's fill some gas, make sure the gun is empty, and test it to see if it fires, okay? Okay, magazine is in. Make sure you aim it somewhere safe, preferably a test shooting area like a paper box or a um, box filled with foam so that it captures the bullets inside, something like that. And here we go. Perfect, it's working as it should. Release the magazine. So here is how you disassemble your Navy P226 Sig Sauer pistol. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you still have any questions, comment below. If you successfully repaired, reassembled, disassembled your P226, comment down below. Subscribe to stay tuned to future videos, and I'll see you guys next time.